live at Belmont Park. It is Perth race number 10 for our Singapore viewers. It's over the 2,200 metres. And Ian, there's plenty of horses to choose from. Uh, that it is. And they all have equivalent decent form lines. A lot that we are expecting to improve. Uh, William Pike, will he hold the key on shotgun? And the two blustery. Well, this horse is just going brilliantly at the moment. It just continues to improve. It's a very good win over the 1600 and then last start over the 1920 mm. at York. And that is the replay that we're going to take a look at now. 50 Holy Sky led legal advice. Cushwin searching for an inside runner. He had a peep over the right shoulder. He couldn't get off the fence. Diving through was blustering in the twinkling of an eye. Blustering shot through. Friars Luck tracked it through as well and then came around its heels. 100 left to go. Blustery the leader. Friars Luck trying to run it down. Blustery kept going. Friars Luck won't get there. Blustery wins it. It was a terrific ride by Troy Turner on that occasion. A really good performance, but I still have queries over the form lines. I'm not overly wrapped in the horses it has beaten. I think it's bumping into a few horses that are stuck between Wednesday and Saturday grade. Well, let's zoom in on some of those horses, and I think two of them would be number one, Ahmed, and number four, Kansas. They come out of the same race. So they were finished third and fourth on that mm. occasion. Which way are you leaning for this race? Look, it's hard to say. I thought Kansas was especially disappointing, uh, so I'm willing to forgive on that occasion, but it's pretty hard to go past Ahmed, who was a great ride by Pat Carberry to get it into the race. It just ceased on that run of the final stage, so it looks like with another run under his belt, that'll be very hard to beat. Number five, Nunca Terendas. I go back to the run on the 5th of August when Lucy Warwick was riding him on that occasion, was beaten the nose by our mate Al, carried the 57 that day, carries the 56 here, and if our mate Al was in this race, you'd probably be looking at a $3 favourite. Yeah, she holds the key, I think, Lucy Warwick. The last three runs, two have been disappointing, one have been good. Nunca Terendas is normally consistent, so Look, I think if she gets into a forward position, Nuts and Trinidad will be hard to beat. Number six, Shotgun, uh, William Pike jumps off Kansas to ride this horse. And for me, that's a, a pretty big leaning uh, point to look at this horse very closely. And uh, at the end of the day, was a beaten favourite last start as well. Yeah, look at the form lines through top of the Wazza. It looks very uh, sharp at a Saturday level. So on speed, I think we'll have an advantage. Shotgun, I think it's the fairly safe way to go in this race. Let's take a look at selections. And I'm going to be tipping number five, Nunsa Torrendez, from number six, Shotgun, number four, Kansas, and number one, Ahmed. Six Shotgun on top from five, Nunsa Torrendez, four, Kansas, and number one, Ahmed. Race number six at Belmont Park. It is Perth race number 12. It's over the 1,000 metres. And Ian, we've seen plenty of speedy horses uh, from the Warwick stable, especially hot goods, but Kamiko is one that just continues to impress as well. You made mention of it in your um, post-race interview with him the other day. He's really on top of these sprinters at the moment. It was never a strength of his, but uh, the way they run to the line, he's certainly figured out how to get these horses to run point to point. Kamiko, no exception. Brilliant run last start. It was a winner by one and a half lengths, and that's the race that we're going to take a look at now. Andamodian back near the inside is Balbala, but Kamiko in the pink colours leads them at the 300, a length and a half to Dream Merger. Dawn's flyer over on the rail. Vampatorio, Faith in Fate, further back is Vandemodian. Dream Merger races up now, almost gets level with Kamiko, but Kamiko's certainly got a response. It's Kamiko. Now getting the upper hand again from Dream Merger, dying on its run, and Kamiko is... I like what Kamiko showed last start. It was great early gate speed, and from then it maintained that rate all the way to the line. Um, look, the time was very good on the day as well. It was better than three votes, which bolted in the next race. So I'm willing to trust these form lines. With that gate speed, I think it'll cross easily. Uh, clearly, its biggest rival when you take a look at this field is number four, push and chase mm. for Dan Pierce. Jared Noskid ride, drawn brilliantly in barrier three with the 57.5 kilos. The recent trial was very nicely behind Dawn approach mm. as well. How do you assess uh, push and chase and how it's going to come back this campaign? Oh, look, it... it first up run was outstanding and that recent trial was excellent so we know it can run the thousand meters out um, it depends how far back it gets and what the head start it can give to uh, Kamiko because if it's too far back it'll be hard to run down. And number two stable second for Brad Graham. Ryan Hill takes the ride here mm. and this is just a horse as well that's got a nice turning speed, uh, cruising speed, yeah. can go out in front and I thought it was one that with the rail out it, the way the wind should be as well that you should have in your top four. Yeah I think Ryan should be going straight forward here trying to get it on speed. This horse beat Mad Ass and we're still holding on to those form lines. It's in that galloper somewhere and I thought last start it wasn't too bad. Let's take a look at selections and I'm going to be tipping number 10 Kamiko from number 4 Push and Shapes, number 2 Stable Secret and number 11 Fast Spring. I'm 10 Kamiko from 4 Push and Shapes, number 3 Happy with Kendall and number 2 Stable Secret. Race number 7 at Belmont Park, it is Perth race number 14 for our Singapore viewers, it's over the 1200 metres and for my name this is the race of the day. Yeah it certainly is, I think it's similar to Hazabeel on the birthday stakes, you see a horse uh, early on in the year and you think, oh, this will beat anything when it comes up against the next time. And for perfect reflection, 
That's how I felt after its last win. But you look at the opposition here. There's some very sharp gallopers in this race. As you mentioned, the opinion that we have of this horse because of the last run uh, was simply outstanding. And we'll have a look at that replay now. Just have a look at the work it does getting to the line. Gallop. Around the turn at the 350 and all G. The debutant quickly raced two in front of all G. Camuro penalty point in the middle. In behind them, perfect reflection. Not getting a lot of room. The odds on favourite. And then Orbit the Sun with 150 to go. It's all G, the leader. On the outside, Bevel starts to gun it down. And now... Now perfect reflection. It'll pick them up. Perfect reflection in about two strides. He At one stage, William Pike was almost reaching for his <laughs> much fabled pogo stick, but in the end, got out and the finish was outstanding. Had it had clear galloping room, this likely would have won by three lengths. What about number six, let it slip? I have such a high opinion of this horse. Mm. It's run into a good one in military rain last start, and conditions just haven't suited the way it races. No. If it's a day where it suits uh, horses that get back and run on, I think this horse would be very hard to beat, but again, I couldn't ignore it in this field. Yeah, it's hard to see where it'll get. And this is the interesting thing with this race, no leader. Um, so whether Let It Slip really plays it bold and tries to go forward, that remains to be seen. But yeah, last start was probably a little bit too far back, but the finish was great. Number one, Scars of Justice was a winner at Northam and then came out and finished just a length behind Chansky. Paul Harvey takes a ride, mm -hmm. goes up to 59 kilos, which is a few question marks, but showed enough in that run behind Chansky. Yeah, that it did. It could be one that maybe takes up the running. Its recent trial was good, settled back in that behind Showy Chloe, but... From what it showed in its debut performance, it looks like a Saturday horse. With a few of these horses being well favoured in the market, you can guarantee that Perfect Reflection will be short. Is there any horse in this that you feel could be some nice value? Yeah, I'm positive this nine, and he's like, is a very good horse in the making. It's the half to translate. It won about half a million dollars, and it's... Last run behind Man Booker was first class. I know it was beaten five lengths, but if you look at that replay, it was last and picked up more ground than anything on that day. It was a very good run. So maybe some each way value there with number nine, Annie's Luck. Let's take a look at selections. I'm going to be tipping number seven, Perfect Reflection. From number six, Let It Slip. Number one, Scars of Justice. And number eight, War Blossom. Well, there's so many I wanted to put in but couldn't. But I went with a seven, Perfect Reflection. Looks quite safe from nine, Annie's Luck. Number one, Scars of Justice. And eight, War Blossom. Final race of the day at Belmont Park. It is Perth race number 16 for our Singapore viewers. And again, Ian, I think we're going to see another short price favourite with Williams, Pike and Peters. Yep, just you can't knock that combination. And this, to me, probably looks the best of the lot of them. Uh, drawn really well, right in the middle of the line. And what we can go on, it's only run to date back in July at Pinjarra. It was brilliant. We can look at that replay right now. And Diamonds, King Cole getting up on its inside, Foundry Court is there in the red jacket, down the outside comes Arcadia Dream, letting loose for Pike and Foxinator's going with it at the 200 though and Arcadia Dream races up with Foxinator and they're the two that will fight it out but Arcadia Dream is going by far the superior and is coming away here with an effortless win, Arcadia Dream the doom It was a really good performance by Arcadia Dream as you mentioned, the way that she just went past the leaders mm. and cruised to the line as well, I have no doubt that she'll be ready to go again and does the Deserve to yeah. be the short price favourite for this race. Outside of those, Secret Minx, we talked about the form lines are obviously beating Infatuated. That was, of course, yeah. at Bunbury, but last start was really disappointing. There's probably some signs here this is an inconsistent galloper, perhaps why it changed stables just to try and iron that out, but even Adam Durant couldn't get a solid run first up, but you'd incline to think that a second crack, he'd probably get the best out of this horse, drawn well and can race on speed, and that is an advantage. Going from an inconsistent galloper to a consistent one, and this horse is no superstar, but you know what you're going to get, and that is number one, High Fidelity, Simon Brastrain, Jordan Turner to rise at the 58 kilos. Yeah, look, it's the barrier that's the issue for me for High Fidelity. Um, can certainly feature. I had it on top last week when it was scratched. So uh, I don't know where it sits in this. I think it'll be very hard to beat Arcadia Dream from the inferior draw. Let's take a look at selections then, and I'm going to be tipping number 11, Arcadia Dream. From number 7, Secret Mix, number 1, High Fidelity, and number 3, Dawn's Flyer. I'm the 11, Arcadia Dream, like you on top. From number 7, Secret Mix, number 1, High Fidelity, and number 5, Oridol. Well, that brings us to the end of another edition of Box C. So it's time now to take a look at the best bets, and I'm going to be following William Pike for most of the day, I think. Race 1, number 1, Mulga, and race 7, number 7, Perfect Reflection. We'll go race 6, number 10, Kamiko, and I fill in the gaps with the Pike treble with race 8, number 11, Arcadia Dream. Don't forget that you can follow us on social media at Perth Racing on Twitter, Facebook, and also Instagram, and perthracing.com.au is the place to visit at the moment because we are getting a lot closer to Ascot, and there's plenty that will be happening there. Yeah, the opening of Ascot is going to be absolutely fantastic. A rejuvenated member's floor, so this is the best time to become a Perth Racing member. Hopefully we found you a couple of winners throughout the program. We'll be back again with another edition of Box Seat for Saturday. Thank you.